Hey everybody, what's happening? You know, the 1970s were a wonderful time filled with bell bottoms, disco, and corrupt politicians. Filmmakers like Coppola, Scorsese, and Spielberg changed the way movies were made while audiences tuned in weekly to laugh at the antics of Hawkeye, Fonzie, and Mork. All of those things have either remained with us, made a comeback, or are now viewed with a gauzy sense of nostalgia. One thing that hit its stride in the 1970s, lived through the 1980s, and met its rightful demise in the 1990s is the made-for-TV movie. Sure, cable stations like HBO and Showtime have glossy, high-quality movies, but I'm talking about the movies that aired every week on regular TV stations. Most of the made-for-TV movies like Dawn, Portrait of a Teenage Runaway, Summer of My German Soldier, and Go Ask Alice were melodramatic cheese fests that put food on the table for the likes of 70s icons such as Eve Plum, Christy McNichol, and William Shatner. Others, like Brian Song, Duel, and the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman are considered the high benchmarks of the form. Tonight on Public Domain Theater, we present you with the film that falls smack dab into the former category. But for its own safety, it has been hermetically sealed. 1976's The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. John Travolta stars as Todd Lubitsch, a teenager who was born without an immune system, so he must live his entire life in a completely sterile environment, whether it be his room, a glass incubator, or a hazmat suit. He occasionally complains to his doctor, played by veteran character actor Ralph Bellamy, and his parents, Diana Highland and the Brady Bunch's Robert Reed. But for the most part, he just enjoys wearing his short shorts, going all rear window on his next door neighbor Gina, played by Linda Blair lookalike Glynis O'Connor. The film was a rating success when it aired on November 12, 1976, thanks to Travolta's breakout role as Vinnie Barbarino on Welcome Back, Cotter. And his icon status would be cemented almost exactly one year later in the film Saturday Night Fever. You know, I remember when this film aired. I was eight years old and was such a huge fan of Welcome Back Cotter and Vinnie Barbarino that my parents told me I could stay up and watch The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. This photo serves as proof, not only of my lifelong tremendous sense of fashion and sanitary handling of meat, but also my aforementioned love of Welcome Back Cotter. Note the t-shirt with Travolta's character on it and his catchphrase, up your nose with a rubber hose. I did love that show, and I really wanted to see this movie. But the television gods had other plans, and sometime before it started, I nodded off. When I finally woke up, it was all over. I had missed it, and I was shattered. In fact, I never saw the film until March 12, 2014, in preparation for this show. Was it worth it? You tell me. There are two people in small roles that you sharp-eyed movie savants may recognize. I'll give you a hint. They both play high school students. See if you can figure out who they are, and I'll tell you at the end of the film. Get your popcorn and your soda, make note of the nearest emergency exit, and switch off your cell phone or pager. Public Domain Theater is proud to present John Travolta, Glynis O'Connor, Diana Highland, and Robert Reed, starring in The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. Honey? Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Lubitsch. Hi, Doctor. I've just come from the hospital. The tests are in, and you're pregnant. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Did you hear that, honey? Call me if I can be of any help with your decision. Yeah, I'll do that, doctor. Thanks very much. another baby. Oh. I couldn't bear it. I just couldn't. No way in the world we're going to lose this child. 
Look. First of all, the odds are four to one against there being any problem at all this time. Honey, even if the worst happened and the baby was born with no immunities this time, we're ready. I mean, immunologists like Dr. Gunther, they know how to save these children now. But, but how can we make a decision like that for another human being? I mean, what if... Oh, Johnny, do you think we could live with it? Oh. <laughs> there were never two people in the world more meant to be parents than you and me. God knows that. I want to believe that. Oh, I want to believe that. A baby. We're going to have a baby. A Like to say something to your wife before. Hello, Mrs. Lubitsch. I just wanted to say, uh, I love you. Conditioning ducts and the heat vents closed, please. And no movement while the air settles. Anybody down there planning on having an itch, please scratch it now. Not later, please. Dr. Gunther, do we have to have all these people here? May we please clear the theater? I'm sorry, please try to understand. We're private people. Begin the cesarean. Mr. Mrs. Lubitsch, he was born exactly like your first son, with no amenities whatsoever. But he's alive. How long does he have to stay in this? There's no way to know. Until we discover a treatment, until he develops an immune system of his own, he'll have to remain in his protected environment. Surely you can give us some kind of a prediction. I mean, are we talking about days or weeks or months? Years. Excuse me? Mr. Lubitsch, you may as well have it straight. We could get lucky, but your son could be here with us for the remainder of his life.
course. some way of, of transporting him safely. And we could get them to go on paying for it and, and manage the million and one other things we'd have to. The sterilization of the food and the toys and the equipment. I, I don't think you realize what we'd be getting ourselves into if we did bring him home. Do you? So, you stay home and get some rest. I'll give him a big hug for both of us, okay? for years to come, is finally coming home for the first time today. Mr. Lubitsch, doctor. Please, Mr. everybody, we, we appreciate your interest, but it's exactly what we're trying to get away from. Hey, Tidy, did you have a nice ride? There you go. Would you back up everybody, please? Mrs. Lubitsch, how do you mind backing up just a little bit? Oh, my, I didn't realize he was so big. Mm. Isn't he adorable? Gina, come on back here. Well, you have to live in that thing for very long. Please, you know. no pictures. No. What is it like, Mrs. Lubitsch? Look, Never I've asked you nicely three times. Now, will you just leave us be? Mr. Lubitsch, won't you come out again and, and give us a... Take one more step and I'm gonna knock your damn head off. Now, get out of here. Come on, all of you. 
and fans. Okay. All right. Backup generator. Okay. Let's see. Breaker and fuse panels. That's all right. Okay. And intercom system. Right. That's it. Are you sure we have checked everything? Well, everything except champagne. In that case, uh, I'm, I'm just going to tuck him in, and I'll, I'll see you in a minute. Gotcha. Okay. Good night, Daddy. Come on, Daddy. It's night, night time. Come on. That's my darling. Night, night time. Okay. And you have pleasant dreams. You talk to your teddy bear, okay? Mommy loves you. I'll see you in the morning. Champagne okay. <laughs> Do you realize how long it's been? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. not listed. Well, we were just waiting for the proper time to say hello. I'm Pete Biggs, my wife Martha, and uh, daughter Gina. We live right next door there. Yes, I know. I should have been the one to welcome you into the neighborhood, but uh, yeah. it's a welcome home present for your little boy. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Uh, please come in. Uh, I'm sorry when I haven't been that friendly, but we just don't have that many visitors. There, that's good, Daddy. Now put the blue in here. See if you can stack another blue one on. Oh, you're gonna put it up there, huh? Oops, oops. Here, try the. Honey, look who's that's here. The big from next door have come over to welcome Todd home. Oh, look, Toddy. Hey, Toddy. Come on. Look over there. Toddy, look who's here. This is Gina. Come say hello to Gina. Oh, yeah. Gina's brought you a present which Daddy's gonna sterilize. Oh, hey, come on over here, Gina. Toddy. Come on, say hi to Gina. Come on, Toddy. Yeah. Oh. Let me go. Let me go. Oh, he's not hurting you. He's just playing with you. Ha, ha, ha. 
watching television, you know? He never comes out of his room. Does he have any friends? Mm-mm. Just old people. Like friends of his parents. A bunch of doctors that come over. And some minister or something comes over once in a while. But no kids or anything. Oh, he has this little pet germ-free mouse, too. Don't you ever wonder what it's like in there? I mean... Be all by yourself like that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But he's weird, you know? Like, I'm surprised he isn't looking at us right now. Every time I look up there, he's looking right at me. Today's record, John, one the most vicious beginning. The last, and NASA hopes, the longest of the three Skylab. Captain! Hey, Captain! Elements under their How are you? Huh? The astronauts breeze through their doors. However, the repair of the bowl-shaped radar antenna proved a more difficult task. Located on the underside of Skylab's multiple docking adapter section, the antenna is used to measure irregularities in ground temperatures and the shape of the Earth. Performing like an acrobatic team, they worked for three hours on the faulty antenna till it was finally free enough to do most of its programmed Earth scanning job. Earlier today, after the astronauts docked their command module with Skylab, they settled in and started their housekeeping chores. After a rest period of two hours, they had their first meal in Skylab. Hello, Ricky. Good afternoon, Ernie. Please come in. checkup. Uh, there's some news I think you might like to hear. Queens and check, Ernie. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, a doctor in Tokyo believes he may have found a treatment that might stimulate the development of the humoral and cellular antibodies. What kind of research has he done? Mm, so far, not too extensive. But by the middle of next... Good year... news, Ernie. Keep me posted, will you? You really got it made, haven't you? Why do you say that? Because you got the best excuse ever devised by anybody to avoid growing up. I'm growing up, Ernie. Yes. Sometimes you're like an old man. And other times you're like a newborn baby. What does that mean? Why do you use that intercom when you don't need to? Does it give you a feeling of power over us? Is this your way of getting back at us? Oh, you're angry at me today, aren't you, Ernie? Yes, you're right, I am. Well, look, Ernie, you don't know any more than you did in the beginning, do you? I mean, so why should I care about what's going on out there? Why should I care about anything that's going on out there? Because there may be a cure at any time. A doctor in Tokyo, your own body. Oh, bull. Hey, 
You know, I'm not so unhappy in here as all of you think. Really? I'll see you, Todd. circuit television system. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And they want to know if you would like to use it to monitor some classes in the high school. What classes? Any classes you want. Come on, you're not afraid to test that brain of yours against the other kids, are you? No. Well? Honey, if it's too abrupt a step for you right now, that's okay. I didn't mean to sound as if I was pushing, but I could... I was talking with that, that doctor that Ernie was talking about last week. You know, the one from Tokyo? Well, we haven't heard anything about him yet, honey, but there is a hematologist in Finland. That's very I gotta think got... about that, that school thing. May I please be excused? Of course, Tom. True love has found you. <laughs> Todd, can you hear me? Hi, Dad. Hi. I want you to meet your homeroom teacher. This is Mr. Brister. Uh, good morning, Todd. Uh, would you like to say something to the class before we begin? Hi, everybody. <laughs> So, if the Truman administration was the fair deal, and the Kennedy administration the new frontier, and the Johnson administration called itself the Great Society, what was the Roosevelt administration? Tom Schuster? Gwen? <laughs> Who's making that sound? 
<laughs> Gina Biggs? Uh, sorry, Mr. Brewster. I, I didn't read the chapter. Todd? The New Deal. Good. Now. <laughs> So funny. <laughs> All right, this has gone far enough. Unless every one of you want to be sent down to the principal's office, you'll cut it out right now. <laughs> take him to and from the hospital in that small bubble. Why, uh, why don't they ever carry him outside or down to the beach or something? Well, they've been suggesting it for years, but Todd won't have any part of it. He says it'll make him feel like a freak being put on display. Gina, go over to the Lubitsch's. Ask Todd if he'd like to come to the 4th of July party at the beach. Well, why don't you just call his parents or something? I want it to come from you. All right, I'll try. Uh, Missy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the other one. Hi, Mrs. Lubitsch. Hi, Dina. Uh, is Todd home? Is Todd home? <sighs> yes, Todd is home. Go on up and thank him. <laughs> Gonna say something? Like hi? Hi. Hey, you know, I've always wondered about this. What's that? How come this part is open? I mean, don't germs get in? Oh, well, you see, behind this wall, there's lots of air vents that constantly blow out all the air so that so the germs won't get in. See this line down here, I can't walk past it. No kidding. No. You mean I couldn't put my foot over that line? No, your germs get in. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Todd, my mom said that you've never even been sick or anything, not even a cold. Is that is that true? Yeah, I like that. <sighs> wow. So, when are you supposed to get out? Oh, I don't know. Keep on looking for treatments. But they've been looking for them all my life. But my immunities keep on building up, I know that. So, even if they don't find a treatment, you'll get out someday, right? Yeah, someday. Well, um, the reason I'm here is, um, uh, I wanted to invite you to the 4th of July party at the beach. Um, if you can't make it, you know, everybody will understand, but... At least, you know, that we wanted you to come. Well, hope you can make it. Yeah, okay, let's head out. Okay. Yeah. Pete, let's put it over here by the rocks. There's an outlet over there. Okay. No. 
Hey, Fred, could you give us a hand putting Todd down here? Oh, yeah, could you get on either side here? Okay. Okay, got it. I'm gonna release it right now. Okay, there we go. Easy. There we go. Okay, let me get the uh, plug here. Okay, I can. Honey, you want to turn the switch off? Okay, I know. Okay. <laughs> Happy Fourth of July, son. Okay, where's food? every morning. And, and I love to watch you ride them. You always talk like that. I love this. I love that. But I do. I really do. Yeah, but I mean, you shouldn't tell people. Why not? Because people think you're dumb. Uh. <laughs> so you like my horse, huh? Well, maybe I'll let you ride him when you get out. Were you really, Gina? <laughs> See you later. Oh, no, no, no. 
anymore, Todd. You'll be staying here in the new Laminar Airflow Center. Because of what we've learned through cases like yours, we're now treating cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy, leukemia patients, all kinds of people, young and old, who developed immune deficiencies like yourself for one reason or another. I've taken the liberty of tentatively selecting your roommate. A roommate? But if you're unhappy, I'm sure something can be arranged. Todd Lubitsch? Meet Roy Slater. Hi. Well, I'll leave you two fellows to get to know each other. Yeah, you've been in one of these things all your life. What's that been like? Me, I've been in here a couple of months and I don't know. I sure miss a lot of things. What's the matter with you? Tumor. So why are you in one of these things? The chemotherapy kills off all my immunities. You know, I'm really glad I got someone to talk to now. I mean, they tried me with a couple of others before. I'm sure the first one was even close to my age. Sure hope we can become friends. Hey! Hey, why don't you talk to me? I, I have so many things I want to ask you. Just let me ask you one question, okay? Okay. What do you do to start liking it? Todd? Aren't you going to answer me? You said I could ask you one question. Yeah, well, I didn't say I'd answer it. Roy. Yeah? 
Do you ever, um... Do you ever, you know... <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Elsewhere in the news, astronaut Buzz Aldrin visits young Todd Lubitsch, the boy who has grown up inside a plastic bubble. That's Todd! I want to see this. Hold on. He's coming home next week. So what? Shh. Bye, Todd. You, you're Buzz Aldrin, aren't you? The, the man who walked on the moon. Oh, God, I don't believe this. You know, I've been looking forward to meeting you, Todd. I hear you have the record for the longest time in a command module. Yeah, I guess so. I got a little something for you, too. To Todd, champion spaceman on Earth, Buzz Aldrin. Thank you. Hey, you spent some time in one of these things, didn't you, right after the moon flight? Something very much like it, Todd. We were in germ control quarters for several weeks. Oh, what was it like for you? The thing I remember most was the loss of freedom. You know, I felt like being in a fishbowl. Yeah, I know what you mean. Todd Lubitsch, the boy who has spent his life in a plastic bubble. <laughs> no, Tom, um, my parents are going to be home in a minute, okay? What is it with you and that freak? He's my next-door neighbor. We grew up together. Is anything wrong with that? Don't call him a freak. I think you're turning on to him. Oh, Tom, you're such an idiot. How long have I had lived next to him? Twelve years? I've probably spoken to him maybe a dozen times at the most. Every year I got an invitation to his birthday party. And every year I went, I was the only one there. Except for his parents. It's the only time I ever saw him, just once a year. Except for the 4th of July. Mr. Lubitsch? Yeah, what is it, Gina? I'm in a big rush. I hear Todd's going to monitor some classes again this yeah, year. That's why I'm rushing. I got books to get at the library and supplies to be up for the hey, stores. Listen, closed. I can do all that for you if you want. What's the catch, Gina? Well, the main thing is, uh, I feel bad about what happened, and I'd like to help out. And uh, the other thing is, I, I'm broke, and I could really use the money. Okay. That's a deal. in there too. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, um, if you want me to bring any classwork with me to school in the morning, just, um, have your mom leave it on the front porch and I'll pick it up on my way. Oh, it's always... 
work so hard to talk to you. You take everything so literally. Say what you started to say. Do you have to use that thing? It's killing my ears. Say what you started to say. Well, I thought a lot about um what happened last 4th of July. And I wanted to make it up to you somehow. And when I saw your father at school today, well, well, I was going to do it for nothing. But then another part of me said, well. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. You're not mad at me anymore? Hey, um, does Mr. Brister look as old in person as he does on television? <laughs> Mr. Brister. God, I hate that guy. Yeah, me too. Hey, how come you're never wearing anything except shorts? It's because it's so warm in here. Really, Todd? I mean, when I come over, the least you can do is put on some clothes. <laughs> how long has it been since you've had a shower? Oh, I can't have showers. I'm bad Zer major production. You should see it takes a couple hours just to sterilize the water. It must stink in there. Oh, no, no, you're wrong. No, no germs, no smell. I don't know, Todd. I mean, it's just the principle of the thing, you know? Well, hasta mañana. Thus, despite Wilson's stand on the League of Nations, Congress had voted against the entry of the United States. America now embraced a policy of isolationism, focusing her attentions inward on domestic concerns, thereby pursuing a course of action which was ultimately to pave the way for World War II. For tomorrow, we will read chapters four, five, and six. I wish you wouldn't look at me like that. Look, I didn't come yesterday because I couldn't. Look, to begin with, Mr. Goodwin made me stay after class to rewrite that term paper for English Lit. And then I got called down to the principal's office for a nice little talking to. And then when I got home, my parents... Gina, you the... don't have to lie to me. I'm not lying to you. And stop using that thing. It hurts my ears. You can go now, Gina. I'm not your slave, Todd, so don't give me orders. You're just like everybody else. Nobody ever believes me. I'm flunking out of school. That's how come I had to stay. The only course I have higher than a D is in art. Oh, I, I didn't know that, Gina. Well, now you do. 
And you can forget about me coming over anymore. Since everyone else thinks I'm letting them down, the last thing I need is to get the same garbage from you. Gina, I'm sorry. Maybe I could help you. How? I can explain things better than those dumb teachers. I can teach you how to really concentrate. Do that? Sure. Hey, what's, what's my father paying you? Dollar an hour. Well, that's how much I charge. <sighs> Tina, you can see my rates. They're right over here. <laughs> OK, it's a deal. Maybe straight down like this. Well, which do you like better? I think I like it straight down better, don't you? You think I'm beautiful, don't you? off your paper. What are you doing? I'm finished. Oh, of, of course. But wait until the others are finished before you hold up your answers. I'm sorry, Mr. Burster. Tan. I need a what? A what? I need a tan. <sighs> well, look at me. I look like a tuna fish. All white and everything. You know, you guys could use a little sunshine yourselves. Starting to look real old. Todd. Dad, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but it's true. I mean, you never take a vacation or buy new clothes. Look at that dress, Mom. Dad, you never do anything for yourselves. Do you ever blame us for bringing you into the world? Did you have a choice? Yes. Well, do you blame yourselves? Sometimes. Mom, Dad, I don't blame you for anything. Honest. I love you. I love you both, don't you know that? I mean, look, if it weren't for what you did, I would have grown up in a hospital. You know, you should hire a nurse from the hospital to take care of me. So then you can go to some place you always wanted to go to. Todd. Dad, it would be okay. I'd love it. I mean, just knowing that you weren't spending your whole life on me. Okay? Do it. Sweetheart, I'll meet you outside. Rachel, don't forget to uh, test the backup generator at least once a day. And if anything goes wrong... Uh... Don't hesitate to call us. Don't worry about it, Faye. We'll be at that number. Bye-bye. Have a good trip. Yeah. 
Johnny, I hope we're doing the right thing. So much could go wrong. Sure we are. This trip is for him, too, you know. I'll give him a little growing room. I feel like he can stand on his own two feet. You know what I think? What? I think part of the reason he wanted us out of the way was so that he could court his girl. <sighs> yeah. uh -huh. Todd! Bye-bye! Goodbye, son. like to do something special. Oh, Todd, really? The way you look at me sometimes, honestly. Well, think of something. Okay. Take me riding with you. Oh, sure. What are you going to do? Just walk out of there? I might. No, dummy. Just help Rachel take me outside so I can watch you. Are you crazy? The two of us would never get you downstairs. Sure. Sure you could. Easy. See, I told you it would work. Okay, keep on going. Nice ladies. Oh, Todd. All right, a little more to left. Okay, that's it. Ugh. Put me down. That's it. Thank you. Gina, come here. Rachel, would you plug me in in the extension? When she does that, would you turn off the battery? Okay. Okay. That's it, Rachel. There you go. Plug it in. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. You can go now. You need to ride for me, okay? Okay. <laughs> Gina, go around that tree and then jump over the canoe and come back as fast as you can. <laughs> Gina, you move so fast. What's it feel like to move that fast? Feels like flying. Gina, ride around me in a circle as close as you can, okay? But what about the cord? Well, what about the cord? You just jump that canoe, you can jump that stupid cord. Well, what about your nurse? Oh, this is the time of day where she drinks sherry. She'll just sit there and look at the plug, make sure that it doesn't come out, and then she'll get pleasantly bombed. <laughs> so don't worry about her, okay? Okay. Faster, Gina! Faster! Faster! Faster, Gina! Now jump over me, Gina! <laughs> jump no over me, Gina! Way, Todd! Come on! Gina, you jumped over the canoe! I've seen you jump twice as high! Todd, what if I missed? Oh, Gina, you won't miss. I know you. You're, you're too talented to miss. Todd! You are really a weird kid. Do you know that? Yeah, I know it. Just do it, Gina, okay? Okay. I was so scared. Were you scared? Not once. Oh, I don't believe you. <sighs> Aren't you ever going to get out of this thing? I don't know. I got a split. 
Listen, I'll be back later to help you get inside, okay? Which one is he? Well, that's Tom. Bruce drives a blue Chevy. Is he the one you're going with? Who says I'm going with anybody? Todd? Put your face up against the plastic. What for? I did what you wanted me to do, not do it. Gina jumping over you with her horse. Oh, it's nothing. Hmm? Did she tell you that? She drinks. Oh, Todd. No, she probably imagined it. God, that's wicked. Listen, I got something I want to tell you. I want to go to school. Yeah. Well, you are in school. No, I mean, really go to school. Dr. Gunther said he'd set it up if you guys said it'd be all right. Here, look, I'll show you. Pretty neat, huh? My goodness. That's got it. Okay, Todd, come on out. time. What's the first thing you do when you get to your home room? Pledge of allegiance. <laughs> the first thing you ding a -ling. All right, all right. First thing I do is check the backup tapes. And? And the batteries. Come on, Dad. Can't you go any faster? Just leave the driving to me. Okay, listen. The filters and the fans are fine. The batteries are up. But the pressure gauge on the main line reach 75%. Then what do you do? I don't do anything. I just stay there. And I get my teacher to go get you, and then you take me home, right? Okay, good. But I want you to check everything on your checklist every break between classes, or I'll break your arm. All right. Okay. Get your current where you find it. Think of yourself as a rechargeable flashlight. Because you want me to be bright, right? <laughs> Little joke, Dad. Very.
Mr. Brister? Yes, Gina? I just wanted to say that uh, I think it's really brave of Todd to do this. And I think we should all show him how glad we are that he's here. Charge. It's what I'm doing right now. See, I'm recharging. Hey, could I ask you a question? Yes? Do you ever feel like a visitor from outer space? <laughs> yes. Me too. <laughs> now, listen, Todd. Uh, we were all about to take a little walk over to the football field. Would you like to come with us? Hey, no more practical jokes. You can trust us. Yeah, I think we've grown up a little since last summer. Okay. Hey, when I pull this plug out, would you turn my battery on, that little black dial? Okay. All right, when I say ready. Ready? Go. Yeah. Hey, Todd. Yeah? There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Sure. How do you go to the bathroom? Oh, the same as the astronauts do. You mean? Sure. Sorry I asked. <laughs> object for a long time any object right and then I, I let myself sink deeper and deeper inside my brain until I find this the center place that I like have you guys ever heard of, of out-of-body travel <laughs> <laughs> 
Sure. I saw a thing about it on Twilight Zone once. It's where you can leave your body and go anywhere you want. That's right. Well, I do it all the time. Oh, yeah? Where do you go? Lots of different places. But mostly the planet that I'm from, Thermopolis. Right. Oh, come on. Thermopolis. I think I think it's a, an exchange program. You see, I was sent here, and someone from here was sent there. One day we'll be switched back again. If it weren't for this secret journal I found, I would have never known anything about it. Are you putting us on? No. Let me look inside that thing, Todd Lubitsch. Look at that straight face. <laughs> hey, no! I think you are from another planet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, Tom, I bet you didn't know that uh, people on Thermopolis were stronger than uh, people on Earth. No kidding. Stronger in what way? Just stronger. Like, uh, for instance, I bet I could beat you at doing uh, push-ups. You talking about real money or space money? I'm talking $10. $10. Sounds okay to me. Let's make it the kind that you have to clap in the middle, all right? Right. Hey, Todd, uh, do you think you should do this? I mean, what about your, your air? Okay. Oh. Talk to you. I know you're mad at me, aren't you? Yes, I'm mad at you. For embarrassing you in front of your friends? No, for nearly killing yourself, trying to show off for me. But Gina, I was Todd, just. What if you had died out there? How could I ever live with that? I'm sorry, Gina. No, you're not. You don't care. You don't care what happens to you, Todd. Sometimes I think you want to die. Gina, I was just doing it so you'd see. See what? That you're just as dumb as all the rest of them? Flexing your muscles? No, that you'd see that I'm not a cripple. And that there's nothing wrong with me except that I, I can't get out of here until they tell me it's okay. Oh, Gina, I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of feeling like a hospital case. Like some weirdo kid who, who can't even breathe normal air because he might get sick and die. I just want to be like a man. Someone you could care about. I don't feel sorry for. Todd. Todd, I don't know what you're doing to me. And I don't know if I like it at all. I don't 
don't know anything anymore. Look, we were just supposed to be friends. I mean, that's all that was supposed to happen, right? I mean, can't we just, just leave it like that? Sorry. You want to watch the sports news on Channel 3? So you can be pretty persuasive no. when you want to find something out. Hello? Gina? Hi. Um, you want to go to the beach tomorrow? Couldn't you have had a spacesuit when you were a little kid? Oh, when I was little, I never even dreamed about going out. Only about people and things coming in. You were always riding your horse in. Yeah. And then I'd get on. And we'd ride and ride and ride. Inside your bubble? Yeah, always inside. All my life I've wondered what it's like to be you. In all my life, I always wondered what it was like to be you. I've always loved you, you know. Johnson Jr. Peter Justice.
Todd Lubitsch. been in telephone communication with a team of physicians in the Soviet Union. How soon could I leave on my own immunities? You know I can't answer that. What would happen if I left now? You're not actually considering... Would I catch something and die right away? I really don't know. You mean I might live? Yes, it's conceivable. Your body's been building up some immunities. But it's also conceivable that... Just a bad cold or a case of flu might kill you. I'm sorry, but we just don't know. Thank you for coming, Ernie. Todd, if somewhere in that brain of yours, you're actually thinking of I was just asking, Ernie, that's all. say 
If we up and ran away from the roaring crowds and the worn out city faces, would they carry on and on when they found that we were gone? Or would they let us go? Would they tag along? Would they not do? Leave us alone. So long we'd live in the country. Leave us alone, we'd make it just fine. Happy in a one room shack, and we'd not look back. So, were you able to pick out the two high school kids that some film buffs may recognize? See the kid eating the apple? That's John Megna, who played Truman Capote, I mean, Dill, in To Kill a Mockingbird. And the girl next to him is PJ Souls, who went on to have roles in Halloween, Stripes, and Carrie, also starring John Travolta. Then she got the lead in Roger Corman's classic, Rock and Roll High School. I absolutely love all of those movies, but I have to talk about the one we just watched, The Boy in the Plastic Bubble, in case you've already forgotten. Every movie ever made has goops, 
They usually happen when someone forgets to adjust a prop between shots or refill a glass in a restaurant scene so that the audience believes that something was shot in real time and not over the course of a day. But the boy in the plastic bubble might just be the first film where if anybody pointed out the goofs, it would have made everybody involved with the film go, yep, that could have killed him. Let's start with the scene early on in the film. Just wheeling a child in a sterile chamber through a hospital, nothing dangerous about that. Whoops, lifted up the corner, germ-laden air gets in, kid could die. A little later on in the film, we see our hero, Todd, who somehow survived that incident in the hospital, where he meets a teen who's been in a sterile environment for months due to chemotherapy. Kid hasn't been outside for months. Oh my God, he's lying. He's been frolicking in the garden. His feet are filthy and germ-ridden. The kid and Travolta could both die. Or my favorite scene, and the more jaw-droppingly stupid goof. Hey, I did more push-ups than you. You owe me $10. Wait, wait, I mean to say, where's my totally sterile, non-toxic $10? <coughs> Dead. It would seem that Todd cheated death throughout his entire life, even at the very end of the movie, when he walks out of his house and rides off with Gina. Or did he? I thought I noticed something over Travolta's shoulder near the end. Let's watch that again. I am the angel of death. The day of reckoning is upon you. Hmm. I guess that death wins in the end. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for films, you can contact me through Facebook, Public Domain Theater, Twitter, at Cherokee underscore Jack, or YouTube, Paul Fish. Until next week, remember that if Hollywood didn't make bad films, many A-list actors would be unemployed. Good night. No, I... <laughs> that would just be awful. I'd be like, yo, were you able to pick out the two high school kids that some film buffs may recognize? <laughs> See the kid eating the apple? No. <laughs> if I could... If I could have had just like a whole Vinnie Barbarino like outfit with the hair and the... What? Why? Where? Who? I loved that show. <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe I could just say that this is actually one of, one of Epstein's notes. <laughs> this is one of Epstein's notes on my shirt, and it says, it actually says, Good morning, sunshine, signed Epstein's mom. <laughs>